Hi there and welcome back to The Four Marketers. My name is Chris and we've got Kristen and Mike. And in this episode, we're going to be discussing the importance of brand guidelines and the trends that we are seeing in our respective spaces in marketing. So brand guidelines, they look, they're they're a staple. They've been around forever. Um, But the thing is, is that before people go, well, I know all about that. There's a lot that's changed and there's a lot of things that we're seeing in our markets and brands are coming, like they understand the importance of them, but they're falling away from them to their detriment. So we've all got different aspects of branding that we do. Um, So I think we'll throw it to Kristen. Yeah, we probably uh, use them the most. We create Mm. them. We've seen a trend a lot probably in the last few years. It's been going on for a while where people move from brand guidelines. They saw it as a way to reduce the cost of of a rebrand and they shift down to quick reference guides. Quick reference guide will just tell you from our perspective, just tells you what colours you're using, what fonts you've got, it explains your brand, a bit of you know, clear space, etc. But it really gives you no indication as to how the brand should be applied, um, how it should be used or any of its tone. So what you lack in a quick reference guide is the brand, really, because oh, all you're in. substituting it in. So right. basically somebody then says, well, you know, I've got brand guidelines. It's like, no, you've got a quick reference guide that just shows you what colours you have yeah. in your brand. You don't actually have a guide on yeah. how to do it. And what we find in that situation is that you get a lot of ambiguity in what the voice of the brand is. Mm-hmm. You get a lot of ambiguity in the way that it's applied. And you also get a lot of ambiguity in the way that it engages with a customer. And the longer it goes on, the less people reference them. And really, you start to lose trust in the brand. Yeah. So, and and that's, that's the thing that we see most so we always push that look you really need your brand guidelines because you need to understand how to apply it and look i I come from the messaging side so so like if kristen's doing the design and all the colors i'm doing the messaging side and i find same thing is that most brand guidelines that i'll get presented with they will have like we are courageous we are bold and and they actually don't have language to use and so as a result the brand across all of their marketing executions feel like it goes a bit rogue Mm. because people don't know what actually courageous looks like like or sounds like exactly. and so what's happening is they're just throwing it out there so you have some bit of marketing that's that's super you know really strong and then you get some that's kind of a little bit bold and a little bit wishy-washy and the point we're trying to get to here is that without a strong brand guidelines but also the activation and use of it yeah. your brand loses its strength right and and consistency and a lot of I think from what I'm finding, and I get sorry, I get quite passionate, is a lot of brands, they forget the importance of having that consistency mm-hmm. because what happens is in the market, when, when you're not consistent, you're nothing yeah, because exactly. you're vanilla, yeah. right? It's, it's too hard to put yourself out there if you're not consistent, yeah. basically, and you haven't got that uh, clear messaging and the clear engagement with the audience. I think what we're pushing harder and harder is to capture more of that messaging in the front of our brand guidelines because it it really sets the verbal tone. We can give them, when we start to build out the the wider brand guidelines, we give them the visual tone, but we feel that you need that combination so that because... Early in the document, we, we talk about, okay, this is what we are, this is what the brand represents from an emotional connector, and here's its personality. But, but what we really get excited about is this is the language you use, and you combine that with the imagery, and all of a sudden you've got a, a template. It's this template that you can't go wrong, you know, and particularly when you're trying to push it so visually into digital media. Mm. If you've got that combination, then the people that are applying it, whether it's your original agency that did the work or whether it's a new agency partner, they've got a guideline to follow and it makes so much. That's the key thing for us is that you've, the more detail and the more specific it is around um, how it represents the brand, the better the, the better the guide we have. And so you don't get this ambiguity, you don't get this sort of wrong messaging. And when you've got lots of different people involved, that's where I think a lot of companies are coming unstuck now. You've got so many marketers that in terms of marketing itself, it's so broad now across so many channels and you get so many different experts across the board all getting involved and having to implement that brand in different ways. And it's all evolving, it's all new. When you look at all the different social media uh, channels and stuff now, they are all still evolving as platforms. How does your brand then apply to that? And if you haven't got strong guidelines, then people just interpret it. Well, they do. Their own thing. Yeah, exactly. And everybody comes up with their own perception of how it should look. And it it doesn't mean just because you created brand guidelines, and that's a clear guideline on how the brand should be interpreted, but it doesn't mean that that is the way it will be forever. Mm. So if you do get new partners that come on board and they say they, they want to push this particular channel, 
if they've got a strong brand guidelines and they feel that it doesn't fit with that channel, that just stimulates conversation mm -hmm. to say, okay, yes. how should our brand be interpreted through this channel? Because the way that we message through all of our other channels and the way we message from a corporate perspective, for example, say, say they're just touching the TikTok and the original brand guidelines didn't consider yeah, TikTok, that, yes, it wouldn't have. <laughs> then, you know, it, it promotes a conversation to say, okay, how, what language should we use mm. and what should our appearance and look and feel be for TikTok because it's a slightly different audience engagement we're looking for. But you can, if you have the GAN brand guidelines, you can create the look and you can ensure consistency with the brand instead of, as you said, Mike, just somebody else interpreting it because it's a killer if somebody's interpreting it because, you know, invariably our branding eye will look at it and go, that's really not how we interpreted that brand yeah. to appear. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you find it with the with websites and things? Because as I said, like I'm trying to reiterate to the audience and listeners here is that it's not it's not marketing fluff. Like no, we no. we don't do brand guidelines because we go, hey, let's charge They're people not to or be put in the draw, no, they're, like they're it's their lives. there's yeah. the problem that customers have. All types of customers is they have a wash of choice. And it doesn't matter if you're an accounting firm, a legal firm, a product, a service, it doesn't matter, is that when you have so many options out there, when you are so vanilla or you don't follow a character or, or a sort of guidelines, you get stuck with that. And so what you know what happens? Price competition. Mm -hmm. Because what you is is like all those legal firms that sound the same, they there's no differentiator other than Price. price and so and so that's what a fight that no company no yeah, brand wants to have yeah. and so like having I, I know I've done a few where I've done like you know a psychology brand and it was like we came up with this messaging where it was like a place where you feel heard and that was so from them and it made her so distinct in her space that it was and she attracted all these new people and now she used that language across everything and so now it's it's really distinct and that's the power of brand guidelines it's not a nice to have it's it's a, such an essential part of your marketing toolkit yeah, I think that's the the key with the brand guidelines too. Is that it's having the essentials and the right items in there, and and kind of communicating the core essence of the brand, so that it you don't have to be maybe so specific in each channel around mm -hmm. exactly how it needs to look. Mm -hmm. yep. If you've got good foundations around the brand and and what the brand identity should be, uh, then you can interpret it and get it more likely to be more accurate. With yeah, the actual absolutely. brand. Absolutely. So that's probably one of the challenges that we see where they they get a bit too rigid sometimes. Uh, and and don't consider then, or don't allow yeah, people give to it flexibility to such. express I, itself. I don't know. Yeah. Do you guys see that? Yes. Yeah, those sort of sort of challenges as well. Yeah, I, and I mean, we find look when we work with global brands, they get quite specific. But even that, they are they are specific in an application of the brand, but give you flexibility in how you you will send that message through. So, um, in the in the positioning, the color use, the font use, etc., that they're really really specific, which they need to be. Um, but they don't get right down to okay, if we're in if we're posting on Facebook, it must look like that because you can't. If you do that, all you end up with is the same post. Yeah. Each yes. time. And so you you've got to add flexibility. No, it's not. more like, okay, if you're using imagery on Facebook, then the imagery must look like this. So it must have a smiling mic facing the camera, um, you know, and looking professional. You can't have somebody running on a track, yeah. you know. So it, it gets really descriptive in the type of imagery you use, not what image you use. And similarly, the same with where the logo gets placed on that image. So it's always, if it's Facebook, it might say, logo is always placed bottom right-hand corner, yep. for example. Yeah. I think that's, that's probably one key area where there's a lot of evolution that needs to happen to a lot of brand guidelines because things like with social media, for instance, the, the, you need authenticity. You need to be like having really good imagery that's really specific and really focused around uh, whatever it is that you're sort of posting about. You don't want this heavily polished really overdone brand mm. to it because that's from what we've seen in terms of social media and engagement those posts very poor performance people see that they see it's over you know oh, too much production done in it yes. too following the brand exactly uh and so it, it doesn't feel authentic it doesn't feel real and so you just go well you know that's clearly an ad or that's clearly something that i'm not really interested in what i want to see is more the authentic photos the authentic stories and stuff that's the stuff that gets it but it's important to be able to 
still have the brand essence come through. Have the consistency still, in there, yeah. yeah well, I've got an example. I mean, like, so, so for everyone, Kristen designed our brand uh, and you gave our colours yeah. and then when your team built our website, uh, you created a, like a gel system um, that you we used on our website and it was built based on the brand guidelines and all the shapes and things like that. So it wasn't part of the brand guidelines but it still looked consistent. And so as a result, like that place of what you were saying with this having flexibility but still playing the guidelines so when people go to our website they can clearly see oh that's the same brand it's mm -hmm. orange it's got the colors it's got the, the the shapes and sizes so i think it's really important look i think i think we need to give listeners and, and watchers um some takeaways uh that they can learn about brand guidelines not just um just about the brand guidelines i mean i think the main thing i would say is you know like what what do you feel your people are taking away from your brand. I think like before we even get into the paperwork of brand guidelines is how do you want people to interpret your brand? I think that's the, the main thing that people listening and watching right now. It's like, do you feel that they're getting an experience that they can remember? From, from all of your assets. Like, yeah, do they I've, go to your website and they and go, it, I feel a particular way? A consistent engagement mm. and a consistent tone. So you're getting that because that's where you're referencing in your brand guidelines because you've done so much work at, when you're creating these brands and creating the messaging and then working on the, the ad campaigns, the executions. Et the executions mm. You're investing so much time and energy in that. Save yourself time by you know, giving yourself the same same voice each time. And that's what a brand guidelines is for. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the essential thing from our point of view is that if we've got that strong identity uh, at a core, then we can work with that and, and interpret that and yep. use it throughout the different channels and in terms of application. Yep. So takeaways, anyone like oh, look, just and suggestions? The clear suggestion from us is like, look, invest in it. Yeah, investing in it. Think forward about the applications of your brand, where the core applications are going to be and incorporate those into your brand guidelines. And increasingly, we would love to see more of the messaging in the upfront mm. to get the language through and, and for them not just to be about the brand and the visual application, but more verbal yeah. understanding. And that's, that's what so it's joined yeah. up. It's a really joined up message. Yeah. Document. Like I would say that like, don't forget the messaging side of yeah. brand guidelines because a lot of people will say to me, oh, I've got a brand guidelines and it's logos and colours. Exactly. And I'll say, how does your brand talk? And yeah. they'll go, oh, yeah, there's that courageous. We are courageous. Yeah. And, and so what I do is I actually write messages that the brand actually, like how the brand actually talks, not just an overarching classification of we are courageous. It's like this is, you know, we, I give sentences and things. And what it does is it completes that brand guidelines. And I... The amount of clients that I do this for, that they just show relief. And they think they go, oh my gosh, I can give this to my team, every agency. Yeah. And so like at first they go, oh, that's an investment. But then when they do it, they go, oh, thank God. Like, I mean, it happened to me this morning. The very morning I got some feedback from a client that had done the, the messaging and they were like, this is our brand. Now I've got something to share as a playbook to my sales team, to my marketing team, to my agencies, to my customer service team. It's incredible. Uh, to, to watch and see people as they see your brand guidelines <sighs> and they start to see it. It's like they come into this own realisation of who they are as their own identity yes. that all of a sudden yeah. they get really passionate about going, oh, that's who, that we, are. who we are. That's what we stand for. That's something I can get oh, behind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, now I'm getting really passionate about mm. our organisation. Yeah, absolutely. So takeaways is, is, yep. is look, yep. in, invest yep. in it. It's not just us saying that. It, it is a worthy step for oh, your brand absolutely. just because, and it lasts years. Like you always evolve it, of course, but it's just having that investment and like you were saying, Mike, having the ability to, to give it to your team and, and go, okay, guys, new board, you know, onboarders, uh, long-term veterans in this business, here's how we talk, steal some of this language, use some of these colours, this is how we work. Excellent. Good. Nice. Well, thank you very much. We're coming from uh, we're coming from the fabulous multimedia uh, uh, work <laughs> workplace here, uh, at Alfred's Point in the Shire in Sydney. Um, so, thank you for joining the Four Marketers, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. See you later. See ya.